One of the key parts of any process design is the bit the silicon attaches to. I'm not talking about the socket, but the bit between the silicon and the socket. This green PCB-like thing is called the substrate, and it's an ever increasingly important part of high performance processors. Modern substrates are called organic packages using a woven laminate core, providing connectivity and performance for chips for more than a couple of decades. That being said, these green things have a limit on just how far they can go. As with any material, as you go higher and higher in performance, the laws of physics start to get in the way and you have to find a way around it. We've done this several times, for example, with transistors, going from planar to FinFET, and then we've got next generation gate all around. And beyond that, things like 2D transistors. For substrates, we've gone from wire bond packaging in the 70s to ceramic packaging in the 90s to today's organic packaging from the 2000s. The question is, what's next? And that's what this video is all about. A lot of the content on this channel wouldn't be possible without you, the supporters. Many thanks to all who support. And if you're interested in supporting, then we have Patreon, we have a merch store, I have a Substack newsletter, or simply just like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Today, Intel is presenting more details on the next generation of substrate packaging, upgrading from the organic laminate packages to new glass core substrates. And that's the key term here, glass core. I'm gonna be saying glass core a lot in this video. Let's start with what a substrate does. When silicon comes from the wafer from the fab, validated, it needs to be attached to a substrate before it can either be used in socketed or soldered down platforms. The substrate provides additional connectivity and power between the contact pads on the silicon, which is measured in microns, to the connections on the motherboard, which are measured in millimeters. This is done with layers that redistribute the signals, but also provide structural rigidity to the chip and make it sit easier in a socket and easier to handle. The substrate also provides support for the heatsink on top. The key components of a substrate in performance chips are varied. It has to offer a high signal integrity, has to keep that integrity if lots of connections are needed, and there are benefits if it remains stable through thermal cycling, such as high temperatures, or there are benefits that can be tuned for the application. Organic laminate substrates have served us well so far, enabling new features for AI and silicon and technologies like embedded bridges. However, the people who design this stuff can already see an end to this technology being useful, especially as these AI chips and chiplet-based hardware gets bigger and bigger and more complex. So insert glass core substrates. Instead of using that woven laminate core, which is by de definition anisotropic, which means it looks different from all different dimensions, Intel has been researching the feasibility of using glass core substrates instead. This research has been going on for almost a decade already. However, Intel is ready to start talking about how they plan to enable its use by the end of the decade. That means there's still a long way to go here, but the plan is to make it available to Intel and Intel's customers through IFS by 2030. The benefits of a glass core substrate, according to Intel, are numerous. Glass is a well-known material and it can be highly tuned in terms of size and features, either through physical manufacturing or additives. This enables it to be better tuned for the product or tuned for simple things like rigidity, meaning that can it, it can support larger packages than current substrates allow. Another feature is thermal stability. Organic packages aren't completely reversible with thermal cycles. There's a little bit of a wobble there but glass core substrates can extend that reversible region beyond anything that a chip will experience. This actually matters more in manufacturing because it enables packaging steps to integrate advanced power delivery, which requires high temperatures during manufacturing. If you can integrate the power delivery, you can reduce your capacitance and increase your frequency. A glass core is also better for signaling and signal loss, and it also supports a higher density, up to 10x apparently, for routing and signaling. Intel states that it allows for fewer redistribution layers for signals as well, which decreases complexity and as a secondary effect, puts less pressure on the supply chain for RDL. As glass core is basically silicon dioxide at its base, it behaves enough like silicon to take advantage of all these properties. Here's a slide from Intel about glass core and the benefits and the value it has. 
Aside from better connections and lower signal loss, I think the key uh, factor here is the size of the substrate. You've likely seen that package size is growing. Chips like Intel Sapphire Rapids or even upcoming Granite Rapids or today's Ponte Vecchio or large GPUs from the competitors. With Glass Core, Intel says that it can scale well beyond these sorts of chips as they get more complex and more chiplets. The low loss also helps with faster connectivity, doubling or quadrupling what is possible today with in-chip transceivers before we even go to internal optics. The good thing is, a glass core could get it better for substrate optics down the line. Today, Intel isn't announcing that it's ready, but simply that they're on the road for, to end of decade production. They've stated that over $1 billion has already been spent on this developing this technology so far, and that it requires an ecosystem and collaboration to enable. Intel did say that they've created an electrical test chip with a glass core substrate, and this is something that looks like a mobile CPU, but in this case, it isn't logically functional. So we're still quite a way away from having it in this, your CPU at home. In fact, when I asked if a user would be able to tell the difference from site, between an organic substrate and a glass core substrate, the Intel spokesperson said probably not, which is really interesting because I really wanted a see-through chip. The other features of glass core substrates is glass vias, a connectivity feature with higher aspect ratios than ever before, and something that we will need for next generation high performance. The team presenting all of this in our briefings were very animated and excited to be sharing their work. Comments about Moore's Law being alive were thrown around, and it's new features and technologies like this that will help enable those chips come to market. Now, one question is going to be about cost, because current ecosystems are built for organic laminate core substrates, not glass core substrates, and Intel is cognizant of that. By showcasing the updates of the technology at the Intel Innovation event, Intel is hoping to draw more partners and more of the ecosystem into this. As I said, the team are very excited. But the question is, are you? Does a glass core substrate fill you with excitement? As I said, we're not gonna get transparent substrates anytime soon, and I was really looking forward to that. But it is interesting to hear how organic substrates have lasted so long, but also how much R&D and time has gone into the next generation of this stuff. Intel is doing all of this work at their packaging R&D center in Chandler, Arizona today. I'm going to see if I can get a preview of the technology with a fab visit in the future. Let Intel know in the comments how excited you are about this technology and how much you would appreciate me getting an invite. I really want to invite myself and some of your comments will help do that. And with any luck, I can come back with all that info.